Welcome to Pound Posse Presents. I am desperately trying to figure out why I am so uncomfortable sitting here tonight. Um, no idea. Maybe it's because I don't feel good. Who knows? But I'm going to start with a question. And how many of you actually do stuff like this at home yourselves? Getting ready for the show tonight, I was indulging in some potato chips. I dropped one. Max came, grabbed it. Gidget heard Max chewing. Gidget came, gave her one. Bella heard Gidget chewing, came running, gave her one. Little man didn't move off the couch. He was under blankets, sound asleep. I took a potato chip and woke him up and gave it to him. Anybody else do stuff like that? Because, like, I couldn't leave him out. Um, the things we do for our pets and the crazy lengths that we go to to make sure that they're all included in stuff. I don't know. Should I have let him sleep through a potato chip? Don't know thing was they were jalapeno I hope they enjoyed that anyway I am very pleased to say that the little rat terrier that I was so worried about um, the last couple of shows was taken in by the Sadie May Foundation which is a beautiful thing uh, many thanks to them for scooping her up they're going to get her some of the medical attention that she does need um, and they're going to get her taken care of so that's definitely definitely a beautiful thing in my book because she was just a little old gal who you know was in need of some stuff that was going to be a little maybe a little more than some people could provide for her uh, even though her blood work was good and um, she was fairly healthy again you know blind in one eye she needed a dental if she's um healthy enough for that then th they're going to do that for her and hopefully they'll be able to find her a home and that's what it's all about if not i believe she's in foster uh which is the next best thing uh, especially when you don't know how long a dog has sometimes you know that foster period is really all it is and, and it's good it's okay uh, it's not a kennel it's not a pound and it's not a death sentence uh, at the hands of strangers which is one of those things that just drives me out of my mind okay um, kind of a sad note let's get that picture of Tia up Tia was returned again to the shelter which is is it's disturbing, but, you know, thank God that she's being given another chance. You know, she was four months in a home, and I guess last week uh, they reportedly brought her back. She was displaying some protective tendencies. Now, Tia was one of my birthday dogs, and, you know, I was so glad to know that she'd, she'd gotten this chance. She'd been in a home before where she was with another animal, another dog, and it wasn't working out, and so she was returned then too. So she's had a couple of go rounds at a home. I can honestly say thank you to North Haven Animal Control for not giving up on her. Um, this girl originally had to be trapped when she was found living under a pool house, uh, last year to be exact, so she entered the shelter last November um, you know again she was adopted into a home found out that she wasn't getting along with the animal there or the other animal wasn't getting along with her I don't remember exactly what the situation was um, but you know they had given her the chance uh, to decompress and to evaluate her and I, I believe that they're trying to place her in good faith um, but it's just they haven't found the right match. So, you know, this last home at least was a solo home for, you know, pets, but, you know, there, there's still um, some kind of something with her uh, being protective of stuff. So, you know, she needs an experienced home. She needs no other animals. Uh, we're gonna say to, not to set her up to fail, no children. Because sometimes, you know, uh, if, if a, an animal is protective uh, or guarding or 
whatever kids don't understand that you know their stuff may be perceived as the dog stuff or the dog doesn't want their stuff their own stuff taken by children so you know again in all fairness it's it's best to put her up uh, with no kids with uh, probably just you know even older ones would be all right I'm sure but a dog savvy person uh, who can work with her and you know maybe some training who knows you know since her return they're saying Tia has been well behaved she never showed any signs of that type of, of behavior so it, maybe it's just the placement maybe it's just the home maybe it just hasn't been the right situation but I just can't imagine this poor girl's confusion right now you know she's in and out of the shelter she's in and out of a home she's in and out of the shelter she's in and out of a home uh, it's it, it's heartbreaking and I don't think it's going to make it easier for her going forward because how many times is she going to go to a home and be able to uh, try to relax and be a good girl and do the right thing uh, unless she does find that magical place to land. So please share her. Uh, she's posted on Pound Posse Presents Facebook page. She's posted on the North Haven Animal Control page. Uh, we're waiting, I guess, for them to post some new pictures because these are the older ones. If you are interested in Tia, North Haven Animal Control can be reached at 203-239-5321, extension 250. Once again, that's 203-239-5321, extension 250. And you know, this, I, I get very personally, um, vested in these birthday dogs and I feel like I, she really needs that break and it, it, it's put another one back on the um, on the roster and we're trying to we're trying to find them homes not take them back but again uh, thank you to North Haven Animal Control for not giving up on her and and allowing her to have another chance but really folks let's pull together and rally and find her the kind of home that she really needs. You know, somebody who's savvy, somebody who can be in charge, somebody who's got experience with, um, you know, uh, maybe a little, some training issues, who knows? It, it, it may be something and it may be nothing. It may just have been that the situations that she's been in uh, haven't been the right ones. So let's give her a chance, let's network her Let's do what we can do and get Tia into a new forever home. Alrighty, um, I will take the camera back for a second um, because I know you love to see my smiling face. Anyway, no comments from the peanut gallery in there. Uh, speaking of birthday dogs, there is one left at the town of Hempstead Animal Shelter and that is Buddy. Now. Unfortunately, there were really only his um, website pictures that were available, and they really didn't do him justice. Uh, there is a, a new team formed, and um, we're going to be putting up a Facebook page this weekend. I have promised to do that now that we've worked out some of the details that we were trying to get uh, finalized about it. It's shouldn't be a big deal to put a page together but sometimes you know you never know but we've got some more pictures and I have to tell you this dog is absolutely gorgeous let's get the pictures of Buddy started you can roll through them look at this beautiful boy he is so handsome I can't even stand it I love that spot on his back I love his little speckles on his face um, he is a two-year-old dog who has been at the shelter, he's just matched, he's a little frog, he's just, he's just passed his one year anniversary. So he has literally been um, alive. He spent half his life in the shelter and half his life wherever he came from. Um, and it's just, it's heartbreaking to know that half his life has been spent waiting for another chance. Uh, he's kind of one of those dogs that's been overlooked and 
I, I can't imagine why. He's just stunning. He's gorgeous. Um, he's been, again, ha half his life behind bars without a home or someone to call his own. So he's got not issues, but he's got, he's got to learn what it's like to be a dog in a home. He's young and he's very strong. Uh, he would need someone loving and patient and willing to teach him, um, you know, again, how to live in a home and be a part of a family. Uh, maybe he needs some training, him too. Maybe not, maybe just love and, you know, a firm, strong pack leader uh, would, would be the thing for him. Look at the spot on his back. Look at how he loves to frog. I can't even stand it. Anyway, um, but he needs to be an only pet. So yeah, that kind of ups the ante for him. Uh, but it's doable. It's, it's not beyond what any dog can hope for. Uh, supposedly he does have food guarding issues uh, per his bio. But, you know, again, it's a call for an adult home uh, or older kids. Maybe he, like I said, maybe he needs training. Maybe he doesn't. I love this picture. This is like, you know, pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? <laughs> do you come here often? What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Uh, just one of those fabulous pictures. Um, but he's sweet and he's friendly and he's playful. And he just needs a chance, you know? A lot of these dogs are diamonds in the rough. And, you know, they, they've had a bad break. They don't know. They don't know how to behave. They've never been given the training, the routine, uh, the schooling, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, when you're when you factor in that he was turned into the shelter at a year and he has been there a year, in that first year he probably had a junkie owner who didn't want to teach him how to do anything. He went into the shelter kind of like wild and crazy because nobody did anything with him. Uh, and in the shelter, it's only going to perpetuate whatever he went into the shelter with. So he, he may have a little baggage in that way, but that doesn't make him an impossible dog to turn around. Um, you know, so many people don't see through uh, the possibilities when a dog has had a rough start. And this is, this dog is like case in point. He's, you know, the world is his oyster and he can be a clean slate if someone just puts into him the time and the effort to turn him around and just to teach him what he was never taught. That's a lot of times what it boils down to. And sometimes, you know, dogs can be a little stubborn and thick headed and and it's just a question of reaching them uh, in a way that they understand. And I understand that not everybody is a dog trainer and not everybody is, you know, able to make those strides with a dog that needs maybe a little work, but that's what trainers are for. And that's my little rant about Buddy because now we have these pictures and we're gonna take off and try to promote him and get him to not be the last Tohas Town of Hempstead animal shelter dog on my birthday list after all these months. Uh, so anyway, if you are interested in him, Town of Hempstead animal shelter is 516-785-5220. Once again, that's 516-785-5220. And I can tell you that uh, he is the, the girls at the shelter do adore him. Um, they think he's great. Again, he's strong, he's young, he just needs a chance. He's this big goofball who's never really had the opportunity um, to be a dog and to enjoy himself and to, to mean anything to anybody. So let's network him and let's get him home because he does deserve it. And there's that picture again. I love it. Uh, all right, so finish rolling through those, and then I'll take the camera back. And we will go on to another dog who is here in Connecticut. Um, I saw his pictures, and I was just like, you know, be still my heart. Uh, let's get the pictures of Midnight up. 
Look at this face. I can't even stand how cute he is. Um, his name is Midnight. He is about eight months old. He's in Bristol, Connecticut. He loves kids. He loves other animals. Um, in my opinion, he's heart-stopping handsome. He'll be neutered and up to date on his vaccinations when he is adopted. Um, I would say that this is one to scoop up if you want like an all around great dog who is still young enough to be whatever you kind of want him to be. Look at that face. I can't even stand it. I want him. I want to just like smooch him and cuddle him and, 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 and kissy face. And I can't even, I can't, he's just too cute. Anyway, if you are interested in Midnight, if you have any questions about him, if you would like an application for him, um, you can email, and this is a long one, friends Bristol Animal Shelter at gmail.com. F R I E N D S B R I S T O L A N I M A L S H E L T E R at gmail.com friends bristol animal shelter at gmail.com if you are interested in finding out more about midnight or if you would like an application um again i just i can't even stand how cute he is uh all right i will when we're done with the pictures of midnight take the camera back and we're going to talk about a dog who was found in some pretty bad shape. And right now she's not up for adoption, but the animal control officers are really trying to find out um, who she may have belonged to and how she, you know, how she got to where she is now. Uh, let's have the picture of the little white dog up there, Zach. This little girl, she's very sweet and well-behaved little dog. She was found uh, dirty and with severe skin issues. She had fleas. She clearly chewed herself up. Zach, let's go through um, the other pictures. I mean, she looks all right there, but when you see how she's chewed up her back, um, it's just awful. Again, she's not available for adoption. Um, Animal control is looking for who she belonged to or to find out where she came from because, you know, she had to come from somewhere. Somebody knows something. Uh, you know, this is a sad situation because those of us who know how to handle animal concerns take for granted that other people do too, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, whatever went on with this dog's issues with her skin and, um, you know, the, the allergy that she has clearly to fleas. Uh, very preventable, very treatable. And, you know, it's up to us to educate and advocate for these animals. Somebody had to have seen the way this dog was um, suffering in whatever situation she was in, but, you know, no one said anything. And, of course, not knowing doesn't excuse neglect or abuse that's for sure but we've all got to kind of do our part and be aware of you know we don't like to get in other people's business and you know we, we don't want conflict but if someone saw this animal in someone's house um having a problem it, it kind of you really got to say something you got to do something uh it's not fair to let an animal get to this point if you're in a position where you have a problem like this on your hands with an animal and you don't know what to do there's so many places to reach out for help instead of letting it get to this point um it, all people have to do is open up and and try to try to get help and by the same token other people again just because we know doesn't mean everybody else knows and, and has the, the, the thought process to try to find out a solution to a problem. So it's up to us to try to help and educate and advocate, like I said. Um, New Hartford Bark Hampstead Animal Control, 
uh, again, actively searching for answers uh, and taking good care of this little girl. But if you have any information, uh, your phone calls, your information that you pass on uh, is completely confidential. You can call 860-309-7228. Once again, that's 860-309-7228. If you know this dog, if you um, know where she came from, who she belongs to, uh, they just want to know. They, they want some answers. They, they you know, they, she may truly be lost. She may have been dumped. Who knows? But the poor baby doesn't deserve... Uh, doesn't deserve what's happened to her in the past, but she's certainly getting very well taken care of. I can vouch for that um, going forward. So one more time, I will take the camera back. And here's another story uh, that will mix up your emotions because it's the same kind of thing where, you know, how did anybody let this poor animal get in this position? Um, and then there's the whole school of thought, the train of thought of thank God for the people who stepped in and did the right thing. And now there's a dog who has his whole life ahead of him. Let's start with the first pictures of Clyde. This dog um, was kept in a basement until the people decided they wanted to do something other than neglect a dog in their basement. Go on to the next one. This is the way he was um, turned in. They made this poor creature who was so knotted and so matted. I don't know, not many people ever get to see a dog that's in this bad a shape. I have, I pulled one off the streets of Stanford once. This dog was so matted he couldn't even see. They made him walk three miles alongside of a bicycle to turn him into a shelter uh, where they just left him without a care so they can go fix up their basement. Um, thank God he was whisked away to be groomed and vetted. Um, go on to the next picture, Zach. This is where they started trying to get that hair off of him. It took paid and volunteer hours to groom him, probably like nine hours in all. Go on to the next. This was a process, like you could see here, he's already like, you see eyes, you see almost a smile. This poor dog went through, God only knows what, living like that, but I can't imagine it was even comfortable for them trying to get the hair off. And he was an angel from what they say. Um, they finally had to get him to the vet to get the last bit of hair. They had to actually sedate him. Go on to the next picture. I mean, you can see it's, it's like just coming off like in one piece there. It's, you couldn't get a finger through that hair to his skin. I don't know how, I don't know how these poor dogs even hang on. Next picture. I mean, he was skinny to boot underneath. Um, the poor guy, it, who cares what his hair looks like now? It just had to come off. Next one. I mean, this, this was a disaster, absolute disaster, this poor dog. Next one. Now here you could see where like his legs were just, his legs and his tail were like the last holdouts. They, this is why they had to take him to the vet and actually sedate him to get a scalpel uh, and scrape that hair off of him. Uh, it was just, it, it, they did as much as they could. And you know, this dog never snapped, he never growled through the whole entire process. Next picture, Zach. There he is again with like the last bit of the, the leg hair stuck to him. And go ahead, one more. There he is all done. Look at that face. I want to smooch that one too. Um, you know, they say he's only about two years old. Thank God he's facing the best years he'll ever have. I believe there's one more picture. Look at him. Look at that little nugget. 
he is free now and you could see the relief uh, you could just he needs to eat a donut so to speak he needs to gain a little weight um, his hair will grow back but they think that in the two years of this dog's life he was never ever groomed kept in a basement until they decided they wanted to do something else with their basement unbelievable kudos to the trio animal foundation um, they have done some absolutely wonderful work with animals they do some really tough cases of rescue and you know they were um, the force behind hazel grace if you remember her that's another story entirely um, if you want to run through those real quick zach from start to finish of clyde's progress is what they're calling him clyde i love him um poor dog just unbelievable and again um, big thanks to trio animal foundation for making this dog's future a, a whole lot brighter than whatever he suffered in the past i'll take the camera back when you're done um, and that's pretty much it for tonight i think we're out zach we have like another minute okay so at the end of the day we've got a whole bunch of animals uh, on tonight's show that do need homes uh, we've got midnight we've got buddy uh, we've got Tia again so please keep them all in your on your radar and in your shares um, buddy's page will be up uh, probably by tomorrow and Tia is at North Haven Animal Control, Midnight Friends of Bristol Animal Shelter. Uh, you can check out his information. Um, these are just some of the dogs that are available for adoption. Um, please share them, promote them, uh, help, help get them home. That's, that's the best thing you can do uh, is, is to share and to keep them in the awareness for people um, to be able to be able to see them and and help them anyway here we go i'm gonna say peace love and dogs until next week thank you for watching have a good night <laughs>